Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. No matter how big or little your maker space or shop is, you can always benefit by using the same spaces within that shop multiple times. And one of the best ways to do that is to make your more stationary or heavier tools mobile. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do in this episode with our drill press using this product, the Bora Portamate Heavy Duty Universal Mobile Base. Stay tuned and I'll walk you through it step by step from the unboxing, the installation of it after assembly, and then our impressions of it. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Thanks for joining me in this episode where I'm gonna show you how to make use of this Boramate product to make your stationary shop tools mobile. Now, the great thing about this particular unit is that it can be used uh, for a wide range of tools, which include table saws, joiners, drill presses, stationary sanders, all those kind of things, even band saws, and in our case, a drill press. Now, the capacity for this unit is about 30 inches by 30 inches uh, in square down to 12 by 12. Everything is in one inch increments and you can put it in a rectangular format. All the specifications for the size that this can be adapted to is in the description below. So there's a wide range of sizes you can use it for. Another great thing about this is that the unit when it's assembled only raises the tool one inch off the floor. Now that was especially important to me because in my drill press that you can see right here, we have this stationary Powermatic drill press that we love. But you can imagine if I did a shop built type of base under it and I raised it two or three inches, now all of a sudden things are up a little high, tables higher, it's just a little bit out of whack. And so by using a unit that is made like this that only raises at one inch, uh, I think that's a real benefit. Plus, Sure, I can build my very own in this case, and so can you, but after seeing this particular unit on sale at Rockler for uh, $59, including shipping, well, I decided to give it a try because, as you know, Bora is actually a tool manufacturer that's pretty well known for its wide range of shop implements and helpers. So we're going to go ahead and unbox this and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, put it together and you do that step by step. Before we do, one thing I want you to notice, a little disclosure, um, I just opened this up and you would see this is the way it would look, except for this manual in reality was under everything. I went ahead and pulled it out to make sure I had everything ready to go when it came time to film this, and then I had good mastery of the material. Now, that brings me right to the first thing that Bora could do a lot better. Uh, looks like a great product so far, but this manual, as well as it has great pictures in it and so, and so forth, it has three different languages, which I think is great. You know, you've got English, you've got French, uh, you've got Spanish. However, the way they put the collation together, uh, none of the languages lined up. You were jumping from one language to another, pictures and diagrams and the footings. And so what I had to do is just take it apart, put it back together, all out of order, but with all the languages together. So that's one thing you want to do right off if you happen to get this edition of the parts manual. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we now have all the parts that came in the kit laid out, and you can see this when you open your manual, there is an exploded parts list that's right here, along with a very detailed listing of what each part is. But this right here represents everything you see on the table right now, all the different parts, the hardware kit, and so forth. Now, the manual tells you that uh, you can do this installation only with a tape measure and a crescent wrench, but to make it a little bit easier, there are some other tools I'd recommend. Number one, get yourself a Sharpie pen. You'll want to mark the lengths of the laterals when you go to install them. Secondly, go ahead and get some wrenches out. These are all metric. You're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench, a uh, 13 and a 10 millimeter. And while you're at it, go ahead and get yourself a 10 millimeter socket out, put it on your 3 8 drive or whatever drive system you have. You're going to need that when you put 
the side rails together on your setup. So having all those are easier. And sure, you can go ahead and get one of these if you want, put it on your driver, on your impact drill or drill driver, and you can really speed it up. We're just gonna use these here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Something that's very important right off that you need to keep in mind is since this is a universal base, I have laid this out right now the way it would be set up if you were using it for a top heavy tool such as a bandsaw or a drill press like what we're gonna do. Now the reason it's laid out this way is envision that the casters are gonna go out sideways. These are gonna go in line in the back. And what this does, it gives the machine more lateral stability. So even though it's top heavy, it isn't as likely to go over on its side. It puts the feet a little bit wider. However, if you are using this on another item like a joiner, something that is longer, narrower, and lower to the ground, therefore has a lower center of gravity, then what you would do is switch these around and they would look like this. This would go this way, that would go this way, that would move back longer, and your casters are gonna end up out here in line more with the direction of the tool. So just keep that in mind, and that's right in the manual as well. It tells you about how to um, make the determination of which setup you need to use for your tooling. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this going. You'll see that our drill press, if you look over here, Dirt Farmer Maggie jotted down our dimensions. This is the actual dimension of the base of our drill press, 12 and a half by 20 and a quarter. But notice that everything in this is one inch increment, so I need to round up. So in this case, we're gonna go to a 13 inch wide base setup by 21 inches deep or long, and we're gonna go ahead and configure that. Let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, let's begin the assembly by putting in the rails. We're gonna start with the front and back rail to determine the width of the base. Remember our base needs to be at least 12 and a half inches. I've set this up so that uh, two holes right there lining up the other holes. We have 13 and a quarter. We only need 12 and a half. We've got three quarter or three eighths on each side to play with. So we're going to go ahead and start with the assembly of these. You're going to need to give your wrench and a driver on the back side or some way to cinch up. These have uh, the marks right there. They're ready to go here so you don't need to put Loctite or anything else on them. You can if you want. Make sure that the nuts go to the back and the bolts to the front. So we're gonna go ahead and get those started. Let's get that first one all lined up. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and get this assembled. So the next step right now is to go ahead and double check to make sure that the base is fitting your tool. So I'm gonna stand it up and make sure. Sure enough, we got plenty of room width wise. All right, let's go ahead and put in the side rails now. All right, our next step is to put in the side rails. And notice from our earlier dimension, we need at least 20 and a quarter clear inside, uh, moving at one inch increments to 21. So if I move this up to 21, just making that that size, move these both back, that'll give me a good approximation of where I want those rails to be. And so, there we go, somewhere around in there, 21 inches. All right, so now notice these side rails though, they are nested, meaning the littler rails fit inside the smaller rails. And what you need to do is place them in here and extend them out till you get the size that you want matching up holes. And that's what I'm doing along the side here. What do we have here? Well, let's look, it says 21's what I need. Right there, I've got 21 and a quarter. That's a little tight for me. Uh, so I'm gonna actually spread these out a little bit and move it right there is what it'll look like. And let's see what that gives us. Well, that gives us 22 inches or three quarters divided by half, three eighths of play front to back. I like a little safety. All right, let's go ahead and bolt this together. Now, uh, before I do though, come around this side here with me and I'm gonna show you something here. Just to make this easy to put it together, you can see the holes are lined up nice to here, here. Just go ahead and put a mark, use a Sharpie pen, and that way you can go ahead and assemble this. And anytime you have an overlap like this, you need at least two bolts. So one's gonna go right here, 
One's going to go right there. Again, nuts to the inside, bolt head to the outside. So we're going to build these two side rails and then install them the side. All right, we've now gone ahead and affixed these to the right length so that this base will fit on our tooling. Now you may notice that right here, I did not put the bolt down here. I instead moved it over here. That's because when you put this in, into place here, that last bolt placement is going to get a bolt right through there, which is the double point right there. So just to get the best grip along the side rail, I just gave uh, move these back here. All right, let's go ahead and put this together, and then we'll move on to our next step. All right, the next part we need to put in here is a swivel plate. And when we call it a swivel plate, it's because the swivel is going to go under it. The swivel caster is going to go under it. Make sure you orient it correctly. The flange is up. It's not down like this. The bump or the recess for the caster points up so that when it's installed, it's like this. Watch that because it can get you. And if you look on the side right here, you can see there's a hole over here where it's gonna be installed. So you're gonna put it in, and notice that this side has a square recess for the carriage head shoulder to go. The other side on the outboard or the front of this does not have it. So let's line that all up, put that through. You have to finagle it a little bit to have it come through. And then here we are on this side, the Screws, excuse me, the nuts that they have are nylon insert, so they are self-locking. You just go ahead and put that in there. We're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench. Hold the shoulder on the other side. We're going to scoot this to the front and then go ahead and tighten this up. All right, now that we have the swivel plate in place on both sides here, it's time to put the foot levers in. Well, this is gonna be situated right here with a bolt through it, but it needs to have a nylon washer on both sides of it. And to accomplish that, you need to do a little temporary jig here. You're gonna go ahead and put this in and hang it out like this with just enough of the bolt protruding that I can hang a washer on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. There you have that right there. Now, I need to get this hole right here lined up with the bolt on this side there. Now I've got it started. I'm gonna have it come through on the other side. Takes a little finessing. And as I do, I'm gonna push out the other bolt and now you have the washers on both sides. I wish I was that smart and say, hey, that was my idea but that's right in the instructions. All right, let's go ahead and put the bolt and the nut into it right here, get those tightened up, and we'll go to the next step. All right, now we need to go ahead and put the caster on the swiveling caster base. Uh, you're simply going to insert it this way, attach the uh, nut here, and I'm going to call an audible right here in the middle of things. I realize that you actually need another wrench here if you're not going to use a uh, adjustable or a crescent wrench. This is a 14 millimeter, so you need to just tighten this down and give it a good crank on it. There you go, boy, That those casters are in good shape. Here we go, we'll put them down. And when I step on it like this, that allows you to raise the caster. And then by putting it down, it allows it to come down. Now we need to put uh, the rubber bumpers that secured to the floor when we are not rolling it around. Let's get to that. All right, the next step we need to do is put the rubber glide feet in. I've already installed this one here. What this allows of when this is not in roll around position, it clears, but when it's lowered, it's going to stabilize this mobile base against the floor. So to install it, this is threaded right here already. You're simply going to thread it in. And this is going to be an estimate because uh, you're actually going to adjust these once you have the machinery uh, set up. So I'm going to just approximate it about right there. You're going to go ahead and put the nut in. Simple, just tighten it down. Long wrench. We use a 17 millimeter and just tighten it, bring it on home, and we'll adjust it later. All right, as you can see, we're rolling around. Let's move on to the next step.
We're almost there. Now what we're going to need to do is insert these tires in these areas back here. They act as straight line casters and we're going to use a similar procedure of installing bushings here. We're going to simply insert the bolt here, get my fat fingers down in there like this and just hang the washer there. Come from the outside and do the same thing where I'm going to hang a washer, nylon washer right there. Now we're going to go ahead and take the tire and place it carefully in between. Raise the frame until I can push that through. All right, I've got it almost through. So what I'm going to need to do is actually tap it a little bit. I'm going to use my adjustable wrench hammer here. And there we go. We've got this on the outside. We'll go ahead and put this little nylon insert nut on here. I'm going to have to grab it from the back side here, stop it from spinning, and go ahead and cinch it down. This type of tire does not depend on rotation around the axle. It's actually rotating around the center hub. And I'll show you what I mean on the other one here. Even if I pinch and hold that, notice where the rotation occurs. It's right here, not around the center like that. So you can install it like this. All right, let's do the other one and we're finished with this portion of the installation. Okay. Now we are at the end of this step. We now have a completed mobile base. And as you can see in this mode with these down, the base will roll around. Uh, it swivels across the front. These are straight line rollers. So you can go back and you can zigzag back and forth into something. And to lower it into place where it lands on these stability bumpers, you just simply lift that and there it is. All right, this is it. Let's now install the machine in the base and see how it goes. All right, let's see if this is mobile. Uh, to make it go into mobile mode, what you're gonna do is step on these pedals and they take very little pressure to raise and to, to lock over. They're kind of a cam system. And when you do, now you're gonna end up with this being mobile and you move it around. Now, do you see the way I'm moving it? That's not the way to do it. The only reason I'm doing this is so you can see it easily but when you move a tool like this that's top heavy, a bandsaw, a drill press, you do not move it from the top. Now I'm moving it in a very small area here and I can get away with it. But the reason you don't, if I was moving this across the shop and I hit, let's say a, a block of wood or a bolt on the ground or a nut or a crack in the concrete and jolted all of a sudden, inertia can take the top over and what a mess. So all, uh, top heavy tools like this really should be moved around with the base. And you can see here, I'm literally moving this around. See my hands here? I am just moving this around with my foot. It's that easy to move this nearly 270 pounds. Now you'll note that I've actually installed this here in a future episode. I'll tell you about that because what I'm really doing is putting a pull point and along with a pull handle I'll create with this and I'll install this system on my other tools throughout the shop, which makes it then very easy to reach from this level down, grab onto that and move the tool around while I'm steadying the top heavy tool. If you have an idea like this or have experience with this kind of mobile base, or want to talk about anything else that's related to the shop and you'd like to share that with your fellow viewer family members, do so in the comment section below. And if you have an idea for a great video about this kind of system, Send it on. If we produce it, we'll give you credit. 
If you found this video to be helpful, won't you like it? And better yet, won't you subscribe to our channel? And when you do, make sure to ring the bell because you'll get notified immediately, approximately every Friday, of a new video episode about the home, the garden, the yardscape, Maggie's Kitchen, great product reviews, and even truck life. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay with DirtFarmerJay.com.